I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, your career has been spread across kind of animations and live action. And I think that given the kind of free reign and ability to do whatever you want in an animation, I was wondering, yeah. can it ever be quite frustrating or challenging to kind of ex to realise that same vision in a live action movie? Uh, the challenge is huge, whether you're doing animation or live action. Um, you're trying to convince uh, a, a really large group of talented people who each have their own strong point of view. You're trying to get them all to kind of see a single direction for us to harmonize uh, in. So uh, whether you're working in animation or live action, it's, it's, it's a lot to marshal, but it's also really fun to, to try to get us all going, you know, in a harmonic direction. Of course, I mean, this, this is loosely kind of based around the, the area of Disney World, I mean, which was... Which is kind of a state of mind, though, yeah. really, more than a single attraction or anything. Yeah, because I, I was just going to ask, I mean, it, that was Walt Disney's kind of initial idea. I was just wondering how much of contemporary Disney uh, can still be kind of attributed to, to Walt Disney himself. I mean, do you think that Disney still survives off that same spirit and the same dreams that he, he always had? Well, I think that... He himself said that Disneyland will never be finished, and I think he was speaking for all the parks that that um, you know it's it's continually a work in progress, and that's how he viewed the future um, as something that was perpetually changing, but but fascinating, and and uh, um, it seemed like the future was fun. It was a challenge, but it was fun, and and uh, that point of view, I think, pervades this movie, or at least we tried to capture it. I, I was wondering, because, I mean, do you remember a time when the future was this kind of perfect, idealistic place? And are you, do you, can you almost go back to your own youth and recall uh, a time when you envisaged this sort of future? Is that what you tried to implement into well, this? Well, yeah. I mean, both Damon and I um, remember that, you know, even when there was a lot of the, the, when has there not been strife in the world? I mean, there's always wars. There's there are always uh, food shortages and disease and all the problems that just come along with being alive. But there seemed to be, until fairly recently, this view that we were going to solve these problems and that future was going to be better for us than it was for our parents and and better for our kids than it was for us and that seems to have changed and we were wondering why there's no more problems in the world than there were 20 years ago 30 years ago um, but our view is that somehow the future has been hijacked and we're all just passengers on this bus so uh, we kind of reject that point of view and and hope to kind of urge people let's take control of the wheel again I mean, also, I mean, Tomorrowland follows in the, in the similar footsteps to Wall-E or, or the Lorax that uh, came out, where they're quite environmentally conscious. And I think, do you feel a kind of responsibility as a filmmaker to, to preach the protection of our future to, to a kind of a young sort of audience, the next generation, I suppose? Well, uh, I, I don't want to make this movie sound like a multivitamin that everyone <laughs> needs to take. You know, you must take this movie in order to have good health. Uh, no, this is meant to be a good time at the movies and, and to be crunched along like popcorn. Um, but if there's something that they can take away from it, the, that's great. Uh, a lot of my favorite movies stuck with me after I saw them in the theater. And, and uh, if this has captured something like that, that'd be great. But yeah, I think there are a lot of problems about uh, um, maintaining this earth and, and taking care of it. it when people go into outer space, uh, they have trouble sometimes adjusting when they come back to Earth because from the moon, the Earth is this very vulnerable little marble in the middle of vast, vast space. And people r realize that the kind of arguments that we have on Earth, the things that we fight wars over, are ridiculous in the larger context. I was going to say, I mean, Tomorrowland must be a project that you're, you do feel very close to and one you're very invested in, in the sense that, is it true you turned down the sort of the Star Wars gig for this movie? Uh, well, uh, you know, that was one of the possibilities, and uh, uh, Kathy Kennedy, is, who's producing it, uh, was also a producer on the very first thing that I uh, wrote and directed. Um, so that, that was a possibility, it was very intriguing, but uh, we were on the rails for this film, and, and I was very excited about the uh, possibility of doing an original story on this size of canvas. That said, you know, I'll be first in line to see JJ's uh, Star Wars. I'm sure it's going to be great. Well, could you be tempted back into the world for maybe episode nine? 
Oh, you know, uh, <laughs> there. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's it's a wonderful uh, uh, sandbox to play in. But I, I also have uh, other ideas that I would love to pursue as well. One of which, of course, is The Incredibles too. I'm just wondering, is it quite? This is obviously your first sequel you've ever done. Is that quite? A... Well, my last movie was actually a sequel, Mission Impossible. Oh, Ghost of course, Protocol. that's true. Yeah. I mean, of your own production, of my own thing, yeah. which is kind of like it feels less like a sequel because mm. it's uh, based on something that I helped create. You know. Yeah, is it quite daunting to kind of match the brilliance of what came before? Is it quite exciting to get back into these characters once again? Well, I think it's daunting, but more in the sense that uh, 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 a lot of superhero movies have been made since Incredibles came out. And to be um, in that arena, but be surprising and not feel like you're, you're following a routine is, is a challenge. So just fine, it's the voice of Edna. The writing for, for her must be especially kind of enjoyable, I suppose. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I was cheap and available, so uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the, the actor if, if that's the character. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank today. you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!